Bobcats. It's Mrs. G here with a storybook session. And today I will be reading a biographical picture book, which means that it is nonfiction, true facts about a person's life, but they use pictures to help tell the story as well as the facts. Today I'm going to be reading On a Beam of Light. It's the story of Albert Einstein. The author is Jennifer Byrne, and the pictures are by Vladimir Radunsky. Our publisher today is Chronicle Books, and we are reading today with permission of the publisher. Now, Albert Einstein was a very famous scientist, and he helped create a lot of the science we know about light, and E equals MC squared is one of his most famous equations. But he was a thinker of lots of different science. And you're going to read and hear about some of that curiosity in the story. So let's get started. Over a hundred years ago, as the stars swirled in the sky, as the earth circled the sun, as the March winds blew through a little town by a river, a baby boy was born. His parents named him Albert. Albert turned one year old and didn't say a word. Albert turned two and didn't say a word. Albert turned three and he hardly said a word at all. He just looked around with his big curious eyes. He looked and he wondered and he looked and he wondered. His parents worried. Little Albert was so different. Was there something wrong? But he was their baby, so they loved him no matter what. So different, he says. Oh, but so dear, she says. One day, when Albert was sick in bed, his father brought him a compass, a small round case with a magnetic needle inside. And no matter which way Albert turned the compass, the needle always pointed north, as if it was held by an invisible hand. Albert was so amazed, his body trembled. And suddenly, he knew there were mysteries in the world, hidden and silent, unknown and seen. And he wanted more than anything to understand those mysteries. And there he is, looking at the compass. And just like that, his curiosity is sparked. Albert started asking questions. Questions at home, questions at school, so many questions that some of his teachers told him he was a disruption to the class. They said he would never amount to anything unless he learned to behave like all the other students. Well, Albert didn't want to be like the other students. He really wanted to discover the hidden mysteries in the world. One day, as Albert was zipping through the countryside on his bicycle, he looked up at the beams of sunlight that were speeding from the sun to the earth. And he wondered what it would be like to ride on one of those beams. And in his mind, right then and there, Albert was no longer on his bicycle, no longer on this country road. He was racing through space on a beam of light. It was the biggest, most exciting thought that Albert had ever had. And it filled his mind with questions. And Albert began to read and study. He read about light and sound, about heat and magnetism, and about gravity, this invisible force that pulls us towards our planet and keeps the moon from floating away into outer space. Magnetism, gravity, light, sound. And he read about numbers. Albert loved numbers. They were like a secret language for figuring things out. But all that reading still didn't answer all of Albert's questions. So he just kept on reading and wondering and learning.
When Albert graduated from college, he wanted to teach the subjects that he loved, all the things he had read about in all those years. But Albert couldn't find a job as a teacher, so he got another job. It was a simple, quiet job in a government office, an office where he worked with other people's ideas and inventions. He did his work very well and very quickly. So quickly, he had a lot of extra time to think and wonder. Albert watched a lump of sugar dissolve and disappear into his hot tea. How could this happen, he asked himself. He watched the smoke from a pipe swirl and disappear into the air. How could one thing disappear into another, he thought. And then he began to figure it out. He thought about the idea that everything is made of teeny, tiny, moving bits of stuff, far too tiny to see. These little bits he called atoms. Some people didn't believe that atoms existed, but Albert's figuring helped prove that everything in the world is made of atoms. Even sugar and tea, even smoke and air, even Albert and you. Even this book is made of atoms. Then, Albert thought about motion. He realized that everything is always moving. Moving through space, moving through time. Even sound asleep, we're moving as our planet circles the sun and our lives travel into the future. Albert saw time and space as no one had ever seen it before. Albert wrote down his new ideas and he put them into envelopes and he sent them to science magazines. The magazines printed everything that Albert sent. He hoped that scientists and professors would be interested, and they were. They were very interested indeed in his thoughts. They asked Albert to come work with them and teach with them. And for the first time in his life, people started to say, Albert is a genius. And now Albert could spend all his days doing what he loved, imagining, wondering, figuring, and thinking. He says, Albert Einstein is a genius. Albert thought about very, very big things, like the size and the shape of the entire universe. He thought about very, very small things, like what goes on inside the atoms that everything is made of. He thought about mysterious forces like magnetism and gravity. He discovered whole new ways to understand how all these things worked. So Albert Einstein as a scientist, exploring different thoughts everywhere that Albert went. He would think and think and think. And one of Albert's favorite thinking places was in his little sailboat. He loved to let his mind wander as the wind blew him across the water. Sometimes, when Albert was having a tough time with a tricky problem, he would put it aside and he would play his violin. Music always made Albert happy. He said it really helped him think better. Albert even chose the clothes he wore for thinking. His favorites were his comfy, old, saggy, baggy sweaters and pants. And he wore shoes without socks. He said now that he was grown up, no one could tell him to put his socks on. My feet are happier without socks, he proclaims. In the town where he lived, he became known for wandering around deep in thought, sometimes eating an ice cream cone, but always recognizable with his long, wild hair, which by then had become quite white. Everywhere Albert went, he tried to figure out the secrets of the universe, and he never forgot about that beam of light that he rode so long ago in his imagination. Albert figured out that no person, no thing, could ever really zoom through space as fast as a beam of light. And that's one of his most favorite, uh, popular or famous equations. He figured that if he could travel near the speed of light, crazy things would happen. Only minutes would pass by for Albert, and years and years could pass by for the rest of the world. This idea was so amazing that people didn't believe it at first, but scientists today have proven that that is true. Albert thought and figured until the very last minute of the very last day of his life. He asked questions never asked before. He found answers never found before. 
and he dreamed up ideas that had never been dreamt before. Albert's ideas helped build spaceships and satellites that traveled to the moon and beyond. His thinking helped us understand our universe as no one ever had before. But still, Albert left us with many big questions, questions that scientists are still working on today. Questions that someday you may answer by wondering, thinking, and imagining. At the end of our book here, we have a couple of paragraphs of some more true facts about Albert Einstein's life. A lot of biographies like to do that for you. Um, you actually can look up Albert Einstein and find some true facts about his life. Maybe you would like to read another biography book about him. And um, he had a lot of interesting experiments um, and equations and things related to science and math that you might find interesting to learn about. So thank you for listening to Albert Einstein's picture biography on a beam of light.